What's going on guys, Guns here back again on another MLB The Show 19 Diamond Dynasty video. Today we are going to go over my 11th inning program predictions. Of course, this program is going to be coming out on Friday, Friday the 13th rather, and this is going to be the final program we are going to see in Diamond Dynasty. Of course, that brings up the question, what other content are we going to see the rest of the year? I did come up with the video explaining some things we could see and some some other explanations some other ideas so that will be up in the top right hand corner but first let me know down below who you guys would like to see and who you think will be in the 11th inning program before we get started in this video and of course as always make sure to leave a like down below always helps me out a ton so I would really appreciate that Let's start off with this. Now, this is an interesting one because we kind of have two theories that we can go with. Um, and the first one I just want to bring up because I didn't even think about it. I had saw it on Twitter. I don't remember who originally uh, tweeted the tweet that I saw that had me think of this. But regard this, um, one theory that some people are having is that the 11th inning program is going to be the first inning program bosses, that being Andrew Jones. Cy Young and Rich Gossage note that none of these three have gotten other cards or better cards and they have not gotten signatures and obviously they are all deserving of signature cards of course Cy Young one of the greatest pitchers of all time Rich Gossage got an immortal card last year and Andrew Jones obviously you know brand new legend into the game one of the best defenders that we've seen in center field in a hell of a bat lot of power once again um, so that's what one one, that's one theory that people are talking about and it does really make sense to me because if you think about it you know this is the final program the 11th inning program and it would make sense to kind of go back from whence you started to go full circle all the way back to the beginning of the game where you have these same bosses but now they are the best of the best and they are 99 signatures would I be a fan of this I honestly kind of would, but I also see why it would not be good. So I would be a fan because I think all three of these cards would be great as signatures, you know, if we're just going to take a peek. And of course, signature cards are always going to be different. You can't just say, oh, every category is going to be this amount better, but you kind of can in a sense. He's obviously going to have diamond fielding around 80 speed. If he did, that would be awesome. Uh, Power is going to be much better. Vision, I don't see getting all that high probably around trout range at about an 86 or so maybe a 90 um, but i do not expect it to be any higher than that uh, contact's going to be better once again as well this is uh, one of his better years but not his best year i do believe because his stats are obviously still pretty low um, but i think an andrew jones card could be great this is obviously who i would pick a 99 signature rich gossage that card would be for lack of better terms insane I know I have been known to use that uh, use that word quite often, but this literally would be insane. If you give this card maxed out per nines, a little bit more stamina, if you could give him 40 stamina and like 75 walk nine, this card would be so good. I already really love the 95. I've used him so much. You guys can see uh, 81 innings, 2.33 ERA. He's been phenomenal for me. He's uh, been my most consistent guy that I've used out there. And then Cy Young as well. I don't think I've really used him at all this year, but this would be another interesting card for a signature. Um, Hit 9 would probably be up in the 105 area. K9, I'm not really too sure. Walk 9 could probably probably rival Christy Mathewson's as the highest for a starting pitcher and it's going to be interesting because he only throws one pitch that's hard whatsoever and that's his four seam fastball and everything else is very very slow so I would be a fan of that but the thing I can see is if people are keeping all of their cards then you know they can't use the first inning cards and I don't really know what's going to happen it's going to be interesting I can just see that being a potential issue with 
where you know somebody locked in those guys for the second inning program or for one of the collections then it's like okay well i can't use those anymore because now um if i want to use these cards you know you can only have one variation of one card at a time so that's one theory um i don't know how big of a or i do like it but i don't know if i like it as much as these cards that i'm about to list off right here so the first one's gonna be eddie matthews now he was a guy i had as my second pick in the 10th inning program but i was pretty confident we were going to see mike schmidt just because so many people have been asking for him for so long and it is the 10th inning program you know at some point we're going to see him um, but i know a lot of people were going to be a big fan of eddie matthews and i talked about this uh when i talked about him in the 10th inning program he's gonna be really nice you know a ton of power i forgot exactly how many home runs i think he's over 500 not in the 600 club though obviously um, but a lot of power i would expect 110 plus per side vision probably could be around 95 maybe sneak it to 100 around mike schmidt range you know once again for another third baseman defense maybe they could give him gold i think they would almost have to in order to get him up to a 99 overall which would be great you know speed not his strong suit but that's definitely good enough that's about like donaldson has which i have no issues with his speed over at third base um you know defense isn't going to be the best in the world but gold defense is nothing to complain about you're going to get the job done um i think this card would be really good you know lefty bat i definitely have a favoritism towards lefties i usually like their swing better and usually not always but sometimes they're more hard to come by especially at a spot like third base and it could be great for diversifying your lineup and make it harder on your opponent um i don't really have a backup i think if the first op the first option doesn't happen with the andrew jones Young, and gossage uh i think he's definitely going to be in the 11th inning program for sure uh another guy i want to talk about is another one I think I think I mentioned in my 10th inning program predictions, and that is Oral Hershiser. Now, a lot of people have been talking about him. He's uh, kind of been a fan favorite for the 11th inning program once again, and I get that. I know a lot of people at the beginning of the year really liked using him. I've mentioned I didn't have a chance to because I didn't have this card because I didn't have the uh, Dodgers collection done. Um, but of course, he doesn't throw all that hard either. You know, only 94 miles per hour in that four seam fastball. Uh, but he has a lot of good pitches, a sinker, a cutter, a curveball, and a changeup. A lot of movement, 94 break, that obviously be 99. Stamina would be above 120, I would imagine. It's per nine around 105, 110. Walk nine, I'm not too sure. You know, of course, this was a little bit before my time, believe it or not. But I think this card would be phenomenal once again. It is always testy, you know, and I always say this, whenever you're dealing with a card, and I do think they could probably give them around a 95 mile an hour fastball, but it's always a lot harder, at least for me, to tell on a pitcher based on, you know, strictly their attributes, how good they're going to be if they're more of a control guy or somebody with not as fast stuff. Think of a guy like Cliff Lee. On paper, when that card came out in Shelfie's moments, a lot of people thought, hey, this could be pretty good. No, nah, it was pretty bad you know it's probably my worst starter that i've used all year uh so i would love to see hershizer though my backup is going to be luis tiant they did tweet out the 11th inning program is going to hold us over the holidays uh with uh whichever way you want to take that whether it's going to be good or bad um you know i could see them dropping a tiant at this point of the year i think if they did it in like the fifth inning program people would be pissed because you don't want to deal with the knuckleballer especially one like Tiant who has a 97 mile an hour fastball for that long but at this point you know it would be in the middle of December I don't think a whole lot of people would be upset I know a lot of people would pick him and he would definitely be a fan favorite and uh the opposite a fan unfavorite least favorite because a lot of people would be pissed off but uh Luis Tiant Phil Necro's up there as well but I didn't have him here because uh if we got Eddie Matthews we have never seen in any of the programs where two cards are from the same team that has never happened believe it or not so if we were to get a knuckleballer I think it would be Luis Tiant keep in mind there's been no cards of either of them this year there's been no confirmation whether they've lost their rights or not we just 
haven't seen them, whether it's tactically done until a later date by SDS, or maybe they did lose the rights, I'm not really too sure, but Tiant would be cool to see. And finally, my last prediction is going to be another first baseman. Um, we have seen back-to-back -back picks in position only once, and that was Acuna to Trout, but I'm going to say Pujols to Jason Giambi. I think this could be a really cool card as well, and he would be a different first baseman now. The thing about this card that kind of puts him back is his power versus lefties had a 61. I did go ahead and check, and he had a 577 slugging percentage in 2001, a year after this, uh, with 11 home runs in about 180 at-bats. I'd imagine he'd have about 90 power, something around there, pretty much maxed out versus righty. He was dominating at this uh, start of the decade with the Oakland Athletics through about 2000, 2002. That was his prime, which signature cards are based, at least the sole attributes are uh, a three-year span, if you guys did not know. Uh, Vision, I don't know how high it would be, maybe around 90, and that would be pretty good because he's going to have high contact. He never hit. Uh, on average, I think his batting average was about 330 around those three years. Defense isn't going to be crazy, but, you know, first base, you don't necessarily need it to be. Speed, maybe they pity him and give him 40, uh, but hitting is really what you're looking for. I know a lot of people do like this card because he has a really good swing, especially against righties when a lot of people would use him. Uh, so I think this would be a great spot. And also, to be honest, I don't think there's a whole lot more guys that can get up to 99 overall. Um, so Gia uh, Jason Giambi would be one of them. Other first baseman is Don Mattingly, who I think would be a good fit. Now, Mattingly didn't play all that many years. He did win an MVP award, uh, where I think his top home runs was around 35. He does not have a better card than this 90, uh, 94 overall card yet. Um, defense could honestly get better. He's won, I think, four or five gold gloves in his career. Um, so, you know, you don't need it better, but it could be. Uh, and maybe he would even be able to be a diamond defender at left or right field if he got 95 fielding or above. Contact would be better. Power would be better. Vision could be probably about maxed out if we're going to have to get him to a 99 overall. With about 50 speed maxed out vision, higher higher-ish contact. I could see near maxed out versus righties, definitely above 99 versus lefties. And if he had about 85 power per side with diamond defense at first base, it would be a legitimate reason to, you know, try him out at least and think about who else you have at first base because he brings you something different. You know, you have guys like Pujols, you have guys like Gehrig, you have guys like Frank Thomas who are good defensively, but they're not quite diamond defensively. I know Pujols has uh, 86 fielding at first base, which is gold, uh, but it'd be interesting to see. He's also a left, uh, he's left-handed, so he's a left bat, and maybe you could even stick him in a corner outfield as well. Um, you know, like I said, first baseman, other guys, uh, you know, would get a signature card. Paul Canerco, he doesn't deserve a 99 overall. Fred McGriff, uh, once again, he could probably get to a 99, but being Eddie Matthews is already in this scenario. Uh, no double Braves, and Braves is obviously the team that both of them were at their best, at their prime. So this is really going to be my uh, last uh, predictions for any of the programs, because it is the last program we are going to see. Like I said, uh, just two different scenarios either it's going to be a flashback program one to program 11 one one to two ones um get it and we're gonna see bosses of andrew jones gossage cy young or it's gonna be something brand new like i said eddie matthews hershizer or tiant and giambi or mattingly are my picks but i would love to hear who you guys think is going to be in the 11th inning program down below in the comment section as always if you guys enjoyed this one make sure to leave a like down below hope you guys have a great day that gives some out yay